Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Jim, also known as the Nomadic Med Hunter from YouTube. And I'm here with Leslie from GMO Free Idaho. And we're going to talk about some GMO awareness. Hello, Leslie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Love to have you here. Love what you do. So what we were going to do is, I guess, just kind of, you can just kind of go off and, and say whatever you want, because you're really knowledgeable in, you know, this area. You know, I'm more of a proactive, what are we going to do after, you know, during now, but you have more of the facts on, you know, certain crops and the, and the frankenfish and, and what's going on, and then especially about your own state itself. So mm -hmm. I, I'm interested, you know, we can start off wherever the heck you want to start off with. It's fine. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know how cued in your followers are to genetically modified foods. Um, so we can start with the basics. You yeah. know, what is, what is a genetically modified organism? And basically, scientists have taken um, foreign DNA, a virus or a bacteria, and they've inserted it into the seed so that the seed either becomes resistant to herbicide or actually becomes a pesticide. Now, here's the problem. There's lots of problems. But they've never been human safety tested, and they go unlabeled in the United States. Even though 62 countries around the world have labeling laws, or they've banned the growth of these foods altogether. And so um, our group uh, in particular, along with, we're in a coalition of other states, about 32 other states, um, we are advocating for the labeling of genetically modified foods. And GMO for Idaho is actively raising awareness about the presence of these foods in our food supply. And we encourage people to use their purchasing power, their dollar, to drive genetically modified foods off our markets. Yep. So that's the basic, um, you know, what, what a GMO is. Um, and we can talk about the potential health risks. Um, like I mentioned, they've never been human safety tested. But there are countless animal studies that show that they cause adverse health effects. Um, you know, genetically modified corn has been linked to cancer. Um, obviously, the high amounts um, of Roundup residues in our food supply is not good for our health. Roundup's extremely toxic, and it's actually an antibiotic. And um, you know, the industry modified these crops so that farmers didn't have to use as much herbicide, so they say. The problem is we're now using over 500 million tons of Roundup in the U.S. each year. And right now the EPA is going to increase the limit of Roundup residues allowed in our food just because so much Roundup is in our food. So, um, gosh, there's just so much to talk about from, from the potential health risks to you know, cross-contamination and the fact that these companies own patents on their technology, um, which leaves farmers liable for patent infringement if a bee or a bird or the wind, you know, moves that um, uh, pollen into a non-GMO field. Well, you got to remember, too, a lot of people that don't or are new to this think that it's the same thing that has been going on for since the beginning of time. They miss understand the fact of genetically modified food versus cross-pollination. So genetically is meaning that they're going inside the cells and genetically modifying the cell, and it's changing, it's altering the genes. Whereas cross-pollination, yeah, naturally it happens. It's, it's just naturally, you know, like, let's put it this way. You're not going to, they have genetically modified strawberries over in Russia because they needed to have a more cold hardy strawberries. So what they did was they took genetic uh, genes from the codfish, which is a cold water fish, they put it into the strawberry, and now the strawberries can last longer through the winter. It, that's, that's the difference. Right, and this is what the industry will say, and I see this in countless, countless articles, and, and I've sat down with Monsanto reps and had this conversation, and I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them about what genetic modification actually is because what we're talking about is not selective breeding and they'll say we've been we've been genetically modifying foods for thousands and thousands of years 
but there's a very distinct difference like you just stated. This is not hybridization. This is not combining one type of apple with another type of apple to create a new apple. This is when they insert foreign DNA and it causes collateral damage. We don't know how it affects the body. We don't know how the DNA changes. We don't know how the proteins change. I mean, really, they're just, they're just playing with DNA. They don't know the effects. Um, and so, yeah, there's a very, very distinct difference. And I have, arg not really arguments, but I'll be talking with someone and they just don't understand where I'm coming from. And it's because they think I'm talking about selective breeding. Yeah, but exactly. Very, very big difference. Yeah, um, I mean, like when we're talking about, you know, you said this in your one video about the, the alfalfa. You have to remember that once the genes are altered, you can't recall it. You can't take that gene away. It's there. You, we've played God, I guess you could say. It's there, and it's just going to move on from there. So, I mean, talk about the, the alfalfa and, uh, I guess, the frankenfish. It's kind of a... <clears throat> yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, when I first learned about genetically modified foods, it was after watching a documentary, The Future of Food. And their focus was really on the environmental aspects and the government ties and, you know, who who Monsanto is, who these corporations are, these biotech companies. And um, I was so devastated to learn um, about how we're affecting our environment because you are so absolutely right. These genes cannot be recalled. So let's look at genetically modified alfalfa. Um, it's the first perennial to become genetically modified, meaning that this seed um, essentially reseeds itself, but it grows year after year, so the farmer doesn't have to plant it every year. And um, it travels very easily. And so as we see this cross-pollination happening, um, we can't recall this gene. I mean, I hate to sound like a doomsdayer, but alfalfa is ruined. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we plant, stop the planting of that crop today, how do we clean up this genetic pollution? We don't. Um, and I think this is another reason that they're increasing the Roundup residues is because um, with alfalfa, alfalfa is planted, sprayed with Roundup, and then harvested after just weeks of being sprayed. No other genetically modified crop um, is harvested so quickly after being sprayed. And so we're seeing an increase in the residues of Roundup in our organic dairy supply, even because of the cross-contamination, and in our um, animal products. So that's really, 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 really unfortunate that we pay that extra dollar, some of us, for those organic products and the cross-pollination, it, it can't be avoided. Yeah, that's the weird thing that, it, you know, organic food costs more. You know, it should cost less because you have to put less stuff on it to take care of it. Technically, it's truly organic. But you also have to look at, you know, in the beginning of why genetically modified food started, was they used to campaign that, you know, mainly because of the gold, the golden rice, if it had a vitamin A deficiency, so they needed to make it better so it would grow in the deserts of Africa and actually produce a better vitamin A, which was a problem that children and you know, people down there will malnourish. So they started pointing it at countries like Europe and America, saying, if you don't eat genetically modified food, you will be the main cause of of um, uh, blindness in, in third world countries. And of course, it's just a whole marketing scam or in, in you're trying to make people feel guilty so they started buying more. And I mean, it did really kind of, at, at first, it made sense. We do have a lot of people showing up in the world. We have 7 billion people now recorded and it was not as, as low as before, you know, we had to do this. But then again, it's like just because we can't fix it. You know, if it, ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We tried mm -hmm. to fix it by cheating, and now it's kind of getting out of hand, and we can't really fix it because so many tests are now being done on different animals, and they're finding out it's killing the bees, the rats are starting to get tumors and all. Small amounts on a small animal show a big difference, but think about what's going to happen to us five, ten years down the line. I'm, I'm actually kind of, it's kind of you know, frightens me and a lot of other people to figure out what what new diseases or what diseases are going to be coming from this. And that's the problem is that we just don't know how it affects our health, you know. 
and I have my own um, speculations, and I think there is a lot of sound science. Um, FDA scientists, you know, memos came out from FDA scientists, and they, um, before they were put onto the market, these scientists urged the FDA not to approve these crops, and that's why other countries have these crops banned or labeled, is because the science was sound and showed that them, they needed further research and that they weren't fit for human consumption. Um, here's the thing is that they like to pull at our heartstrings and say we need to feed the world, right? Mm -hmm. But um, genetically modified foods have been on the market since 1996. There's more starving people in the world than ever before. And other countries don't want these foods. We've lost 90% of our exports here in the U.S. because they won't take them. I mean, look at Haiti, for God's sake. In the wake of the earthquake in 2010, Monsanto donated 475 tons of GMO seed. And these Haitian farmers, a starving nation, 10,000 of them gathered together and burned every last seed while uh, <laughs> chanting, long live the native maize. They don't yeah. want it. They can feed themselves. Yeah, and hunger isn't because there's not enough food. You know, we waste 30 million pounds of um, food a year in the U.S. It's a lack of democracy. It's because of war. It's because of um, a lack of infrastructure, getting the food to the people that need it. And it's a lack of dependency. You know, farmers need to be able to save their seed in order to feed themselves, right? Well, but when you're growing genetically modified seed, you can't save your seed. It's against the law. Well, not only is it against the law to have the genetically modified seed, but now that they're also putting in the Terminator mm -hmm. seed, saying that, like, you pretty much a Terminator seed is you get the seed from the company. You have to buy it from the company. You grow it. They give you a bunch of Roundup. You spray on it. You can grow a big crop. You can't even save the seed now because it kills itself, the Terminator seed. So then you have to go back to the main company and buy more seed. Right, right. And and there are Terminator seeds, but even if they're not Terminator seeds, you still you still have to buy seed every single year. It's extremely expensive. The herbicides are expensive. Um, you know, it, it completely kills the beneficial bacteria in our soil. Like I said, Roundup is an antibiotic. And so these nations, you know, become dependent on these multinational corporations and they're totally not able to feed themselves. And the truth is, is that this technology is failing. It doesn't even work. You see that they have to add more herbicides to these seeds. We're, we're seeing 2,4-D uh, component of Agent Orange being added to these seeds as an herbicide because we're seeing huge weed resistance and massive pest resistance. Yeah, so super bugs come out. Failing, exactly. The super bugs, super weeds. You know, as soon as they unlock it, then you have to start all over again and try to fight nature again. You can't beat nature. It's going to win. You can see that on almost any level. But um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> The thing about, you know, we have countries over in like Asia where they openly, commonly eat dogs and cats. And we find that to be extremely taboo, yet they will ban or mandate labeling of genetically modified foods. That's a pretty big red flag to go up in my head. And I know some people are like, oh my god, that's that's weird. Why, why are 62 other countries... Uh, labeling or saying we don't even want it like Hungary and Haiti they're saying let's burn all the crops and get rid of it and say get out because it's not good for you you can look at all the other pests like Russia won't take our corn it's yeah yep New Zealand won't take genetically modified foods China has GMO labeling and um, you know countries like Syria have banned the growth of GM foods are you you're kidding me China has labeling and Syria has banned the growth Mm -hmm. You know, those are red flags right there. Um, well, from away from like the seeds, like let's look into something that a lot of people probably don't also look at. They might now know that fish can be, your know, genes can be put into to the seeds for the plants. But let's talk about the actual fish itself, like with the frankenfish with the salmon problem that they're going to go with that they passed when uh, they voted on it April 26th, was it? Yes, and I, I haven't um, heard anything yet um, about the status of that, but um, Aqua Bounty is a company that's created
created the first genetically modified animal that could potentially hit our markets. And it is a GMO salmon, and it's a salmon that's been modified um, with an ocean pout so that it grows twice as big, twice as fast. Now, this is for, you know, farm-raised salmon, but here's the problem, is that if the salmon escapes, which it's very common for salmon to escape the farms into the wild, um, if just 60 of these salmon escape, then within 40 generations, our wild salmon population will be 100% extinct. Okay, we're not messing around here. This is a serious, serious issue. And the company, just like most of these companies, is completely unethical. Because in order to create this salmon, the condition was that the salmon had to be sterile through the research and testing phase. But in 2010, the USDA gave them a grant to do the research on how to make the salmon sterile. So they didn't meet the conditions of development and it makes me wonder if we haven't already seen the salmon escape into our wild population. So I'm hesitant to even consume wild salmon, not just because of this, obviously the radiation from Fukushima and some other issues, you know, in our water supply. I mean, our water is so incredibly toxic, it's, it's a whole other issue. Um, mm -hmm. But this genetically modified salmon is, is an outrage. And people have worked so, so hard to protect our wild salmon populations. And it's all just going to go down the drain because of some, some vision to create this Frankenfish. Um, so we had until the 26th of April to submit our comments to the FDA. And uh, 1.5 million people did submit comments saying, please don't approve, you know, this salmon. And so I'm, I'm waiting to hear what happened with that because I'm not entirely sure. The good news is, is that Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, some of these grocery stores have committed to not selling the salmon if it becomes um, if it's approved for market. So we just have to encourage food pro providers to um, you know say no and and educate people. Yeah, I mean, like she said, this is nothing really to joke about. Now you might say forty generations, and you're gonna people are gonna be like, hey, that's a long time. I'm not gonna be. No, here. it's not. But it's not about you, for and it's not about me right now. It's about our children, our children's children. You know, if you want to keep going on with your family, and you want, you know, you care about your kids and all. You know, this is the food that we're taking in, and, and it it really it doesn't worry about you anymore. It affects everybody that you know, going to know, and it's just it goes deeper, and that's the that's the thing. Like, yeah, they did, you know, they can get even if that was the actual one intention or if there was something else behind it. It's it is an awesome idea. We can make a bigger fish or we can have more fish with less and you know more crops. It's great though, but you know what? It's it's proving not to work and that's really scary to have only sixty of them to get lost into the wild and then all of a sudden we lose the entire fish. You know, what happens if something else you know they're gonna keep going. Yeah with other fish, you know, like the cod. You know, what right. do you do with that? Well, and what happens if more than 60 fish escape? What about 600? Does that mean in four generations that, you know, we're going to see a, a re uh, an extinction of our wild salmon? Exactly. You, know? and you, I mean, you can get some crazy group of people that go, hey, let's go let them go into the wild. Or, you know, I mean, yeah, if they're farmed, it might be a little bit harder, but I don't know. There's just so much, like you said, it's a very, when you talk about genetically modified organisms, it can be extremely broad. And I don't know. It's. Well, there, there's so <laughs> many, there's so many issues and concerns surrounding this, you know. I mean, we could sit and talk about the government ties for hours. We could talk about cross contamination for hours. You know, it's estimated that 50% of the heritage corn varieties in Mexico now contain Monsanto's GMO traits. You know, we can talk about being dependent on just a handful of corporations to feed ourselves. We eat when they say we eat. And what happens when these crops are failing? What happens when the corn that's used for processed foods and animal feed, um, you know, gets taken out by all these pests? But that's all that we have to eat because these companies own these seeds 
and the cross contamination is so prolific. What do we eat? You know, and it's like the thing, potato famine times a thousand. Yeah. Well, another thing too that the Roundup is killing these weeds. Most of them are all edible weeds, just like lamb's quarters and amaranth and stuff. That's actually Roundup resistant, and they can't kill it. And some of these other plants that they're trying to kill on these superbugs, it's really not worth it. I mean, you can do your research on all how modern agriculture isn't working, and you'll find a lot of stuff that's going on. But just to talk about genetically modified foods, it's like you said, you know, let's just take one of those topics. You know, whatever one that you want to talk about, you know, like um, the government tie, too. It's kind of scary the fact that. You know, you can just get a grant, and now the fish are sterile, or, you know, like the USDA. You have to watch out for that, too. You just have to pay a little bit extra to get that certification on your food. So you still have to do your homework on figuring out what company is truly not genetically modified. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some, there's some great movements that are working to um, educate and inform us. I mean, look at the non-GMO project. There's over 9,000 products that are non-GMO project verified. And from what I understand, it's um, much more, uh, <clears throat> it's much harder to get the certification mm -hmm. than even um, organic certification because it's very, very strict. There's only a 0.9% threshold where you can have that small margin of GMOs in this food. So I trust this label um, more than organic often because with organic foods, these farmers do not have to test their crop to make sure that cross-contamination has not happened. Their only requirement is that they cannot initially plant genetically modified seed. Yes, so, that's the know, thing. Um, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say that, that's the thing. With the, I, I've spoken with the, one of the spokeswomen of the non-GMO uh, project, and she said it is extremely hard. I mean, the scientists have to go in there and do all the tests to make sure that because they're putting their own label onto you know, the, the new products they want to be asked for. And they will tell you that this one failed. I think it's actually on their website. Of, they'll have a whole list of ones that they, that they passed. And uh, just, I have your off track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're doing great work. So that's exciting because what we're seeing is a tipping point. And I want to talk about that in a minute because we can talk about the doomsday stuff all day and just how... Um, you know, horrible this is, but I always like to wrap back around to the good news. But before we do that, <laughs> um, you know, with the with the government ties, let's look at um, Michael Taylor. You know, he's a, a Monsanto attorney, leaves Monsanto, and becomes a policy writer for the FDA, and writes the policy, helps to write the policy that puts genetically modified foods on our markets, and then he goes back to Monsanto and works there for a while and then in 2010 he was promoted as head of the FDA under the Obama administration. So we're seeing this revolving door and this is how these these things are getting passed um, and it's it's with the EPA, the USDA, the FDA, um, you know, and, and the Supreme Court, you know, Clarence Thomas was a former Monsanto attorney, he's now a Supreme Court judge and then we see something like the Monsanto Protection Act um, being passed, uh, being that rider being slipped into this bill, um, and it's because of the government ties. And so, it's my personal opinion that um, you know, even though I advocate for GMO labeling, truly, the only way to fully eliminate genetically modified foods is with our purchasing power. You know, right now there's a national bill for GMO labeling. This isn't the first time that this bill has been submitted. And it's great because it raises awareness, it gets people talking about the issue. GMO for Idaho is submitting legislation next session. It's going to really start a conversation. And the point is to raise awareness. There's some states like Washington who I really think could pass. Um, they vote on initiative in November. I really think it'll pass, which will be great. Um, but they're going to be tied up in lawsuits, and it's going to be a headache, you know. So um, what we really have to do is put our money where our mouth is. Yes. Because it's, what, it's profits that drive them, and it's profits um, in in another direction that will that will shift the market. Yes, voting with your dollar is one of the best ways that we still have a vote. I guess you could say. 
Um, and when you're going back to saying, you know, the Monsanto Protection Act, I always say it's more like a game of chess. You're strategically placing your pieces before you make your initial, you know, point. And, you know, we have the Monsanto Protection Act, and then back in 2011 they had the Food Modernization Safety Act. And, you know, now they're doing this whole revolving door like you're saying. It's, you know, we're not going to have this, but then we can still have somebody else help us out and, and keep going and going. Or you can buy the USDA, uh, you know, certification just with a couple extra thousand dollars just because you're technically bending the rules a little bit. And then in Washington State or a couple other places, we they can't sue Monsanto because of the Protection Act, but Monsanto can sue them. Right. Like they're doing that with uh, Vermont. Aren't they? They put the lawsuit together. Yeah, the Vermont crime. was so close to passing it last year until um, until Monsanto threatened a lawsuit against the state. So, you know, they're going to do everything that they can to stop this. I mean, look what they did in California with Prop 37 at 50, $58 million, you know, um, they all came together and put out a lot of propaganda and defeated this initiative. And um, it's my understanding that there was actually voting fraud as well. So, you know, they're pulling out all their stops. So the only thing that we can do, the most powerful thing that we can do, how we how we make a change is we achieve the tipping point. And it's estimated that if just 5% of the population stops buying genetically modified foods, that we can push them off our markets without legislation. Now the point of legislation is to raise the awareness. You look at Europe, they tried to ban genetically modified foods in 1996, but the World Trade Organization and, and Canada, the US, and Argentina actually um, forced, sued them and forced them over trade agreements to um, accept genetically modified foods on their markets. So they counteracted that with GMO labeling. And because of that, there's very little GMOs on their markets. Kellogg's, for example, will make cereal over here with red number 40 dye, corn syrup, um, you know, beet sugar, but they'll send the same exact cereal to Europe and it has cane sugar. It has no high fructose corn syrup. It has no food dyes. And it's because of it's because they won't purchase it over there. They don't even have to label it. They just won't even purchase it. There's places where there are labeling. So that's the objective through legislation is to raise enough awareness that we can achieve that tipping point where 5% of the population stops buying genetically modified foods. Here's the beautiful thing is that we are so, so close. You, you see them fighting harder and harder, more propaganda, more money being thrown out, pulling out all the stops, the Monsanto Protection Act. They're fighting for their lives. Yep. And it's because, and it's because we are winning. You know, and you, you even look at something like California, that wasn't a loss. Yeah, they didn't get it, they didn't get labeling laws, but look how much awareness was raised out of that. You know, that's how this coalition of states that we're involved in um, has formed, was through that proposition. Um, and it's, it's just really exciting. So no matter how scary and how horrible everything is, and um, we might be fearful, just know that this movement can't be stopped and that it's only a matter of time. Yeah. And then we'll figure out some technologies on how we can clean up this genetic pollution. <laughs> yeah. You know how they say, you know, uh, you know, never underestimate the power of persistence. As long as we don't quit, we just keep going, we can do this. You know, think about, you know, the future of, you know, your children. You want them to have a better life. You don't want them to have find out that now we're having a bunch of tumors and stuff right out of birth just because you started eating some type of cereal that you kind of knew, but you didn't kind of avoided it anyway. You kind of thought it was hoopla. But, I mean, I'll probably put in the link below, um, I'll put the non-GMO uh, project website there. I think they do have the entire list of what they have certified to be right. non-GMO, um, at least. And I mean, you can find it now on a lot of different websites where they all kind of link up. You'll see like brands to have and brands not to have. And yeah, there's and the tons shit. of information for sure. And you should also post the link for the Coalition of States. I can send that to you. Yes, yeah, send um, that to me. Yeah, but people can go there and look and see, you know, what type of 
um, groups are being active in uh, legislation for labeling and how they can get involved. Yeah, I was going to say, how can now is it kind of easy to get involved? Let's say like your state doesn't have it, and they want to actually do their own and try to get people together. Would it, do you need to have like a giant group of people, or you know, how did you get involved in that? Well, you know, you look at California. One one grandmother, Pam Larry, ignited that whole thing. She wasn't part of a group or anything. She submitted the legislation, and and then they, you know, gathered around that and came together. Um, with us, you know, and some of the other states, there's already active groups that are part of the coalition um, that you can plug into. Some states, there's nothing going on. And all you have to do is contact the coalition and say, hey, you know, I want to be part of this um, and go through the proper steps to get involved. And then there's support for how to go about, um, you know, strategically um, going about submitting legislation. So here in Idaho, we were going to do a ballot initiative, but um, they recently passed laws here that makes it very difficult to um, do a ballot initiative. And so we're submitting legislation. We have a sponsor for our bill, and we're doing that in January. Awesome. So, awesome. yeah, anyone in Idaho that, that wants to help out, yeah. you know, let's go. It's time. Yeah, I mean, everyone needs to start to band together on this and, you know, just, you're not alone. Everyone just stand up, fight for what you believe is right. Don't keep listening to the hoopla from the, because, the, you know, a lot of things too from the mainstream media, they'll tell you opposite stuff just to, to make you look like the bad person. You know, right. even in Europe, they're, they're saying psychology, there's, you have a psychotic, uh, psychotic problem if you only like to eat health food health organic food and you have a problem if you have that disease. You know, I saw that. A new eating disorder for people who are obsessed with um, <laughs> eating healthy. Re you eating know. real food. I like to eat real food. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a fanatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, that's okay. And, you know, bottom line, I just encourage people, you know, when I first learned about this, I was very angry was confused um, and I had hate and resentment in my heart you know for our regulating agencies for the companies that are doing this and um, I was just really I actually I got really depressed like this is not something that we can take lightly it's it's very moving it, it touches our heart and it saddens us you know and um, that's why I do what I do but um, I encourage everyone to come from a place of love and to not have fear in their hearts and to come up with solutions like GMO labeling, like buying from the farmers markets, um, getting together with your community and making that their paradigm completely obsolete by creating a new paradigm and doing it through unity and love and compassion. And if we can all do that, if we can all make that shift and come together um, from a place of love and you know just letting letting them do what they're gonna do and completely making it obsolete um, then then we'll really see some huge results so yes, that's, really that's my opinion my perspective and that's that's where I come from in my activism and so far it's served me very well <laughs> no, I think I completely agree with you I mean it is very overwhelming, and like we were talking about, how broad it is. You know, don't some people might get one part, and then they they open up that floodgate, and it's like, oh my god, and it's completely overwhelming. You get very depressed. Yeah. You get very angry. I've I've witnessed people too. I don't know if you have when they first start to realize, and you know, they're like a couple of years behind or a year behind. You're like, don't worry, calm down. The information's out there. You're, mm -hmm. you're just shocked your system. It's okay. Just smile and know it will all be good at the end because we are at that tipping point. And I think that's actually kind of a really good idea. I never really looked at it that way until you brought it up. That the reason that they're putting in these protection acts and they're trying to put all these different laws to, to you know, go against us and making different diseases to say that we're weird and all is because they're scared. And that's actually, you know, an awesome way of looking at it. Not so much looking at, but I think that's actually, you know, actually the truth now that you've said that. For so, sure. For I mean, sure. It makes, makes sense. 
you look at all the countries who who banned, you know, India has labeling now and the story of India is just devastating beyond belief. Mm -hmm. I mean, Indian farmers committing suicide by drinking Roundup because of the failure of these crops. I mean, hundreds of thousands of farmers. Um, and and they've just kept pushing forward and now they're going to have GMO labeling, you know? And that's uh, another thing, too. When people are talking about Roundup, it's, it's, it's good for the food. It's good. It helps it grow. I'm like, well, if it's so good, then why don't you take a shot for it? Take a shot of it and let me know how good it is. Because if you've got to put it into the ground, yes, it gets diluted and stuff, but like again, you're a bigger body. Eventually, if you keep putting in amounts, you know, these things don't just flush out of your body. They're going to take a toll on you eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I don't absolutely. want to be one of those people. I don't want to be part of this little, you know, human experiment. You know, that's what it is. You know, this is the human trial. See how yeah. far they can get until we realize that this isn't the best idea. Yep. Yep. And, and they will be stopped. And, um, I'm I'm looking forward to the future, no doubt about it. And um, I feel blessed. I feel blessed. Genetically modified foods really woke me up to a lot. Um, I was a sleeper before before that point. And it feels good to be alive. It feels good to be aware. Um, and the duality of the human experience, you know, all all this crazy stuff is going on, but, but there's so many beautiful things happening. It's and all a lesson within itself. Even the good and the bad, you can take a pot. As long as you, like, this is what I look at it. This is all a dream. And as long as you live it with positive intentions and you just keep going forward with what you feel is the right thing, everything will work out. And I believe that everything will work out at the end. And I think that we could just, you know, just stay positive and smile. You know, help people around. Don't don't look down at people and be like, "Oh my God, you didn't know about this," and get angry at them because then they they get a really bad, you know, vibe about it. And they start to to shut away. Like, oh, this this one one guy was trying to tell me all this other stuff, and it's completely. You don't overwhelm them. It's already overwhelming. You know, just give them bits and pieces. You know, this like this little chat, and this is why I'm doing these. Is trying to put out as much as we can. Yeah, yeah, it's and all you helping. know. When the student's ready, the teacher will come, and if they're ready to receive the information, they'll take it as it comes. And um, you know, as a as a GMO for Idaho in, in our organization, that's what we're here to do: is just to facilitate awareness and education. And um, anyone who wants to take part, you're welcome to to join us in this fight. And what we're finding is that this is becoming a, a really big passion for a lot of people, and it's one of the um, most important issues of our life of of this century, um, you know, our food in general, um, and you know the introduction of monoculture crops and the green revolution in the 70s and just everything. I mean, we're going to have a food revolution, and it's a beautiful, exciting thing. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, I mean, people should I get be all scared. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just. It, it gives me peace in my heart to exactly. have that perspective and to share that perspective. And you know, as an activist and actively fighting this on a on a daily basis, um, I would go insane if I didn't come from a place of of love and peace. So exactly, you can't go at this with you know a cold heart and be extremely angry and say I'm going to rebel. No, you kind of have to. Roll with the punches and, and just try to, you know, it's, it's like a game of chess. To try to keep going with it and, you know, be strategic about it. If they want to play, the, you know, the legislative way, let's do the same thing. Vote with your dollars, you know, make your voice be heard. Link up with like-minded people, especially when you're doing, you, you start to go to, you know, little talks or, uh, you know, food stores and you see them, talk to them. Maybe you can start like a community garden or do something else and, you know, grow your own food and and do more research with each of like you know each person instead of you being completely overwhelmed by each thing. One person can start looking into what's really going on with the thinking fish. That's why I was asking you because I didn't have time to look for it and I couldn't find anything either. And I thought maybe you would, but apparently, you know, it's either buried right now or they're still kind of doing whatever they want. But at least somebody might eventually see it. Meanwhile, you know, you might still be doing something else on different crops. 
the new ones that they're starting to look at. So then you can all share the information together. So it's not overwhelming as right. much. Right. But yeah, and I felt you know our organization feels very very blessed to um, you know just in the last three or four years that we've been doing this, the momentum of this movement has just exploded. And we're connected with some really great organizations, um, the Coalition of States, and um, some some groups in Europe, and um, you know, so it's been a really great opportunity because exactly we all come together, bring our own perspectives and our own information, and collectively we are able to share that and to make changes. Yeah, and you know, that that quote: "Be the change that you want to see in the world." And lead by example. Those are like some yeah. things that I really like. You know, and I don't think like you no, know, you know, you're always the teacher. Teach people to become teachers to go forward with everything that you're trying to do. And we're all in this together, Re regardless. If this doesn't work out, we're all gonna have problems later down the line. If it does all work out, then we'll probably have another problem, but it won't be genetically modified food. So yeah, it's all it's all positive. You just gotta keep yeah. going and roll with the punches and go with the flow. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of there's plenty of issues. You know, if I wasn't so involved in this, I know I'd be on the fracking issue, like white on rice, man. It's just oh, there's so many things out there that like once you really dig into it, it's like boom, everything is completely different. And I mean, even when I was putting up the posters today um, for for something about GMOs. They uh, they were talking about the fracking and there were some other things too. But I was like, right now, I just want to tackle this one. Let me yeah. See this one now because this is the one that's coming up, and it's it's right here in our face. Where sometimes in like my state, fracking is kind of still on the back burner. It's not that you know we're talking about it and it's a big issue, but it's right now at least maybe my perspective is the GMOs. I'm going to be part of that team right now, and then yeah. after that, I guess I can shift. Well, what's beautiful is, is that especially here in Idaho and Boise, um, we've got this nonprofit organization that actually connects other nonprofits. And so for all of us environmentalists and foodies or whatever, um, you know, I get support from these other organizations at my events, and in turn I support them at your events. So, you know, we're involved in the fracking issue because, um, you know, these people are involved in the GMO issue. So we're exactly. supporting each other. Um, you know, and so it just goes back again to coming together as a community and doing what you can for, for each cause and each movement and, you know, putting your energy um, in, into the betterment of society and for the greater good. Yeah, I mean, like, it's all connected. We're all in this together. It's not as GMO, fracking, or whatever. You know, you pick the study that you want to pick, and then we all kind of help out and do it together, put it on any level, like I was saying. Yeah. But, um, you were talking about that other website, the sustainable one. The what? That the sustainable website is that yours too, or something? No, sustainable. Sustainable Pulse is um, Henry Rollins, um, and he's working with the the GMO Seralini. Um, if you remember the rat study um, with the tumors, mm -hmm. the first long term animal study. And Henry contacted me and said, you know, I'd love for you to do a 30-day blog series for me. So I've been, I think I'm on like my fifth video or something, um, and I'm just doing this series with Henry, who's totally awesome and so supportive. And um, so, you know, I do a one-minute to three-minute blog and just pick a topic and kind of um, talk about it. So you saw the alfalfa one and, and yeah. the fish one and... Um, so I think my next one's going to be about the national labeling <clears throat> um, law that's in that's been presented to Congress. So, well, I think maybe later we can talk about that in the future. Um, yeah, you know, we'll we'll cut this one off because I would love to have you back on again. For uh, sure, anytime. And... I mean, I enjoy collaborations and I enjoy open discussion. And um, you know, I've I've been following you for a while now and I really enjoy your work and I think that you're doing some really good things with the um, you know looking at the solutions knowing that knowing the problems but focusing on the solutions and that's absolutely what it's all about so keep it up thank you, thank you. yeah uh, 
but yes, I'll put all the links that she's going to actually give me. Um, I'm going to put her, her own ones up there too. And, you know, I'm glad to have you on. If you like this, please click the like button, leave a comment, and we will be having more shows. I think I'm going to try to do this at least um, for a while because this is a big topic and a lot of things need to be coming out. And I think it's really very a positive way of putting out the information and trying to connect other people and realizing you're not alone. You know, yeah. The one thing, you know, you might be the weird one in your town, but <laughs> on, a, on the internet, you're 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 connected with thousands and thousands of people that you have right. never met before. Yeah, and you've got and a big can, family. You can actually have an awesome conversation and feel like you're at home. So it's yeah. very beautiful. Well, you know, that's how we met, right? How exactly. did we meet? Through some GMO of something or other? Uh, probably something like that, or maybe you found me on my page from, I don't know, maybe the, one of the seed giveaways for the heirloom seed contest. Yeah, something. But, you know, that's just it. You know, all these collaborations, I mean, con getting connected with Henry and whoever else, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. But anyway, thank you. Yeah, we'll have a great and, uh, day. Hi, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Uh, don't sign off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good Bye. night.